hello and welcome to another episode of Talking to Myself. I'm your host, Jake Letizia, and this is the podcast where I look into a camera and I talk to myself. Hey, how you doing? How's it going? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing good. Let me close my fucking wardrobe. There we go. I don't think you guys could see it on camera. And if you're listening, you definitely couldn't fucking see it because you can't see anything, but it was annoying me. It was a distraction to me, and I'm the only one talking for a bit, so I shut it. Anyway, a derail that did not matter. How's it going? How you doing? Hope you're doing sick. Another fucking too long of a hiatus, bro. I apologize. This podcast used to be once a week. Now, what the fuck is it? Two to three times a week? Or, or, or not two to three times a week. It's once every two to three weeks? What the fuck, dude? Maybe that's why I I stopped doing it as much, because literally right now I can't form a sentence that makes sense. Anyway, how you doing? It's good to be back. Fuck these hiatuses. I need to stop doing it. I need to get back to a weekly schedule. I'm trying, dude. Or maybe I'm not. Who knows? But I'm here now, and I'm glad to be talking to you. Um, It's Thanksgiving. I'm recording this on Thanksgiving. I was supposed to be at home right now with my family, but my dad got COVID, so here I am, recording the podcast, talking to you lovely motherfuckers. Um, and honestly, it's a good thing, because if I had to go to Thanksgiving tonight, I would, what, I would have recorded tomorrow, which is Friday, Black Friday, and then Saturday would have came out? Fuck that, dude. Now it's coming out. Now you're listening to this on Black Friday, if you're listening to the moment it comes out. You're getting sick-ass sales, and you're listening to my dumb-ass voice. Fuck yeah, dude. I hope you're buying something right now. I hope I'm the idle chatter in your brain while you're getting fucking a handbag for 10 bucks. <laughs> a video game, a video game you really wanted that's been slashed from 70 to 30 bucks. I hope that's what's happening right now. I hope somebody's buying God of War for $45. That won't happen. They're not putting God of War on sale. It's too fucking soon. Damn, dude. I I played through all of God of War Ragnarok since I lasted this podcast. That's fucking tight. That game is good, bro. It's a good game. I'm not going to get into any spoilers because people are still out there playing, but I like it a lot. I liked it a lot. The thing that people always ask is, is God of War Ragnarok better than the, the, the previous one? God of War 2018. It's a hard thing to say. I've been comparing it with people to, uh, people have asked, I've been comparing it to, uh, Back to the Future. Like Back to the Future 1 is clearly the best of the three. It's clearly the best movie. Right? Structurally, it's the most solid, best, like objectively best time you're going to have with those movies. You know, if you're looking at it from a bird's eye view, being unbiased, just going, hey, what's, which, is the, which is the most well-crafted? It's the first movie. And that's how I feel about God of War 2018. Of these two, if you're looking at one that's like perfect, it's God of War 1. But if you're looking at but if you're looking at it for, like, what's crazy and fun, then you might go God of War Ragnarok, bro. Because Back to the Future 2, it's not it's not objectively the best, but I like that movie a lot, dude. That movie's fun as shit, and it's wild. And that's what God of War Ragnarok is. It's super fun, and it's fucking insane, and I like it a lot. But I don't know if it if it's if if it's better than the last one. But does it really matter, dude? Does it really matter? Because now you have both of them, and you can play both at your leisure. You can play them back to back and pretend it's all one game. Fuck it. <laughs> I don't like comparing sequels. You know, I think the question should be: Is it good? Not is it better than the last one? Because people will do that even if it's not a sequel. When Us came out, people were like, is it better than Get Out? And I'm like, who gives a fuck? It's a different movie. I like all of Jordan Peele's movies for different reasons. Okay? I like Us the least, but it's not because the other ones are better. It's just because that individual movie, I don't like it as much as the other two, bro. Honestly, I might like Nope the best. I do love Get Out, but I might I, like, again, Get Out? Is God of War Ragnarok, bro. The first one is objectively, Get Out's objectively the best movie, but Nope is fucking more fun. <laughs> it's more wild. I like when shit gets fucking wild. But again, I like them both. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. God of War Ragnarok is good. If you can get it on sale, get it. If it's not on sale, buy it, dude. 
unless your PlayStation is fucked like mine, your PS5, bro, what is going on, dude? There's a bug with my PlayStation 5 where it shuts down every time I play a PlayStation 5 game. That sucks, dude. The whole reason of having a PlayStation 5 is to play PlayStation 5 games. But for some reason, there's a bug that just shuts my system down. And it keeps happening. And every time there's a software update, it fixes for a little while, but then it starts happening again. Hey, fix it immediately, you know? Fix it. Make sure everyone's console's working when God of War comes out. Because I thought I had a faulty system, but then I looked it up online, and, 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 I, and the first video that popped up was why your PlayStation 5 is shutting down when playing PS5 games. And the guy in the video immediately goes, this is actually a really common uh, uh, glitch with the PS5. This is, a, this is a common problem people have been happening with the PlayStation 5. And to be quite honest with you, there's no real way to fix it. There's no real way to fix this common problem that literally is preventing you from doing the thing that the thing does. What are we... What? Make sure that's not... Make sure there's a system software update that fixes everyone's console when God of War comes out, you know? Because I played through God of War uh, on the PS4 version. Because every time I played an hour of it on PS5, my PlayStation shut the fuck off. If I was lucky, an hour was lucky. I would have a full hour, and then I would try and play again, and then it'd be like every 10 minutes, every 20 minutes. Hey, man, fix it. Thankfully, God of War Ragnarok on the PlayStation 5, the PS4 version running, is almost the same exact fucking game. So, it's not that big of a deal. But if it was a, you know, The Last of Us Part 1, thank God my system worked when that came out, because if it kept shutting down when I played that, I would have been pissed, bro. 70 bucks for a remake that I thought was good, but a lot of people complained about. If my system was shutting down, I would be, I would be with the mob right now, dude. I would have joined the mob. I would have been like, yeah, you know what? I agree. Fuck this thing. But fortunately for Sony, it was fine at that moment. And fortunately for Sony, again, maybe that's maybe they knew. They're like, ah, we don't need a system software update because the God of War 4 will run the same. And it kind of does. I mean, it looks a little bit better and runs a little bit smoother in the PS5 version. But the PS4 version, it's fucking running at 60, and it's it looks great. Um. Anyway... But it's Thanksgiving, bro, and I'm complaining. That's no good. <laughs> It's Thanksgiving and I'm spending the first fucking uh, 10 minutes of this podcast being a whiny little piece of shit. I shouldn't be doing that. I should be fucking saying what I'm thankful for. Which, uh, fuck, where'd I put my phone? I should put it on the ground. Um, yeah, I should be saying what I'm thankful for. You know, Thanksgiving, I've talked about this on the podcast before. Thanksgiving... I don't need to rehash it, but Thanksgiving is, um, Thanksgiving is, is just giving thanks at this point. It's not the fucking pilgrims and the, and the native merit. That's not fuck that shit. We've decided that's not the thing. And also I've, I've talked about this on the podcast for years of like, I'm cool with that not being what the holiday's about. Cause my whole life, I didn't even know that's what it was about. I just thought it was having dinner with your family and being thankful that you have a nice family who loves you and trying to convince them to be better as people. That's what Thanksgiving has been for me. When I was young, it was my parents showing them, sh showing their love for me. And as I've gotten older, it's been me showing my love for them. That's what Thanksgiving is. And I, I honestly, I'm, I'm a little upset, sad that I didn't get to do it today on the day, um, that my dad's got COVID. Uh, it's you know, I wanted to go. It's nice. My mom makes a specific kind of stuffing. A homemade stuffing that's delicious. Um, I have a Friendsgiving that I'm going to tonight. I was going to bring that stuffing to the Friendsgiving, and now I'm kind of fucked. Now I'm kind of fucked. <laughs> now I'm kind of fucked because I don't cook, and it said bring food, and I'm fucked now. And I feel like if I bring wine, it's a cop-out, dude. But I'm going to I'm gonna bring wine and cornbread? I don't know. I'm going to try and find some sort of food, some sort of sustenance that makes sense. I'm going to try and get a pie, but I feel like I'm fucked. Thanksgiving Day, there are no pies. The pies have been bought in. The good ones, at least. I doubt I'm going to get a pumpkin pie that people are going to want to eat on Thanksgiving Day. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like I, I, I might go to the supermarket 
but nothing there is gonna be uh 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 like ooh this is good. <laughs> no one's gonna ingest the things I bring to this friend's giving and be like, oh fuck yeah, dude. They're gonna be like, hey man, what is this bullshit? I'm like, bro, it's not my fault. My dad got COVID, bro. Blame COVID. You would have been having delicious stuffing with little pieces of uh, Italian sausage in it right now, but. My fucking dad fucked up, dude. My dad got a little too wild, bro. I don't know how he got COVID. All he does now that he's retired is sit in the house and watch the stock market. So who the fuck knows how he got sick, but that's what happened, dude. Don't blame me, dude. Blame the fucking Italian man. Blame my Italian father, dude. Him being Italian, does that have anything to do with it? No. But if it but if you hate Italians, it might help it might help you blame him more. <laughs> But that won't wash, dude, because my uh, the person hosting the Friendsgiving is Italian as shit. More Italian than me, bro. She's a fucking Ginzo, dude. It's fun. It's fun because I don't have many. Um, I guess I have I have Italian friends, but for some reason with her, she we always talk about food, and she fucking brings up. <laughs> like every time she's like, "Oh, I I went to this place." I went to the sandwich place. I'm always like, what'd you get? Every time she brings up food, I go, what'd you get? Because it's always some prosciutto, mozzarella, asiago bullshit. It's always some really guinea Italian wop ass thing that if I was at the same place, I would order it. <laughs> so it's fun to have uh, a friend who you're like, yeah, dude, we got the same taste buds. Dude, it's so dope to have a friend with the same taste buds, dude. It's dope. Taste buds are an important thing, bro. Friends and people you're dating, you w I want similar taste buds. Have I talked about this on the podcast? I feel like I have. I, I've dated, I've dated, I've dated vegans and vegetarians. And I love, I literally, w w I was in love with vegetarians and vegans. I loved them. I loved being with them. They were beautiful, wonderful, fun, funny people. Okay. But every time I've dated somebody who's eaten meat, I like, I love them more. <laughs> I like them more. It's true, dude. If I eat prosciutto with you, that's, I'm, I want to make out. I love you, dude. I love eating meat with someone I'm having sex with. I don't know why, bro. I like it. <laughs> Something about devouring flesh with someone you love, that's romantic. <laughs> it's sexy, dude. I like it. I don't want to crunch some lettuce after I just kissed you. That sound that's boring as shit. Okay? I don't want to fucking bite I don't want to bite into a tomato and have it spray all over the place after we just came. I don't want to do that. I think that's gross. <laughs> but ripping apart a fucking cheeseburger Right after you both nutted, that's, 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 that is the thing you do right before you propose to somebody. 100%. Bro, that's how I'm getting married to somebody. I'm going to, we're going to have a fucking a, a aggressive, hot sex, and then we're going to, and then we're going to both get a fucking burger, and we're going to scarf it down in front of each other, and then I'm going to be like, damn, you're so fucking sick, and I'm going to get on one knee and open a fucking ring box, and, and she's going to say yes, dude. That's how it's going to go down, bro. If I ever get married, that's how it's going down, 100%. I'm, I, I, I'm not getting married to a salad lady. I can't do it. <laughs> F flash forward five years, I'm, I'm fully married to a woman who fucking hates eating meat. <laughs> It could happen, bro. I've become susceptible to it before. But who knows? All those relationships didn't work out, and maybe that was the thing. Maybe that was the thing. Maybe it had nothing to do with communication. Maybe it was just that she likes to get fake uh, uh, turkey. <laughs> maybe that was it the whole time, man. Maybe it's that every time we get a burger, she gets a turkey burger. Maybe that's why we didn't work out. Maybe it had nothing to do with the fact that she was like, hey, I, w I would like for you to text me more. And I was like, I don't like texting. <laughs> That's not why, dude. That's not why. Hey, I feel like you never tell me about your day or ask about... Uh, I feel like you always ask me about my day, but you never tell me about yours. That's not it. It's because you got imitation sausage. That's what it was. <laughs> Yeah. 
It wasn't that. It wasn't. It wasn't because I wasn't doing what I loved, and that made her feel bad. <laughs> It wasn't because I wasn't pursuing my dreams and instead I was just dating her and that made her feel rough. It was because she ordered an impossible burger and to me, that's impossible. <laughs> that last one sucked. That last one sucked, I'll be honest. That last one was fucking too on the nose and I hated it, but I liked it. I liked saying it and honestly, I'm just saying it sucked in case you thought that because I thought it was sick. You ever do that? I do that all the time, bro. I say bad jokes like that and the thing is they're not bad. They're good. They're very good. Something like that. I She ordered an Impossible Burger and I thought that was impossible. That's perfect, dude. To me, that's perfect. But to other people, they're like, oh, yeah, I get it. Yo, shut up, dude. Hop on board this train of laughing with me, you idiot. <laughs> No, you're perfectly in your right to think that sucks. <laughs> That's what I really believe. Right now I'm having fun being like, nah, fuck you, you should laugh at it. But but uh, what I genuinely believe is anytime someone doesn't laugh at something you say, it's totally fine. <laughs> I've been having fun lately on stage being like, when, pe when I say something too sad, I was on stage the other night and I said something too sad. Uh, right after I had them going, they were laughing, having a good time. Then I said, then I added something that was just sad as shit. And then everyone just got quiet and I was like, you know what? That was too sad and I apologize. <laughs> that was too sad and I apologize. You guys were having a good time and I fucked it up. That's on me. Let's let's get back on the train, dude. Oh shit. But anyway, yeah, Thanksgiving. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Thankful that I have somewhere to go tonight, despite my uh my dad getting COVID, you know, I'm thankful for a loving family. Um, you know, people, people, I don't know. Some things, uh, I, I shit on a lot of traditions and I shit on a lot of like corny or cliche things, but also I'm very embracing of a lot of cliche things. Cause fuck it. Cause they're cliche for a reason. I've said that on the podcast before cliches are cliche because we all like doing it. You know, kissing someone in the rain is cliche, but it's... F have you ever done it, dude? It's fucking sick. In a good way. I feel like the way I hit sick right there made it sound like I was gonna, we were both going to get ill from it. And you might, dude. That's the thing. It's a double entendre. I accidentally did a double entendre, bro. It's sick to kiss in the rain. It might get you sick, and it's also hot as fucking dope as hell. I like how I held up two fingers for that, but I said three things. Fuck yeah, dude. And anyone who listening didn't even know that, bro, but I'm an open book. <laughs> I'm an open book for my stupidity. And I want people listening to know I held up two fingers when I just said three things. Dumb fuck you're listening to right now. And I'm thankful for that, bro. I'm thankful for everyone who listens to this podcast. And I know it's cliche to say what you're thankful for, but I like doing it. I like telling people I'm thankful for them. I texted a few people I'm thankful for them today. And there's other people who I'm thankful for who I, who I didn't message. And maybe I should. Maybe I should. But yeah, I don't know. This Thanksgiving in particular, I'm feeling very thankful. I'm feeling like... I met so many people this year who I, who I adore and who I love and who I like a lot. And it all came from uh, committing to doing something I love. It all came from committing to something that I've always wanted to do and I felt like that is something that I should be doing and I'm finally I'm finally doing it as much as I feel like I should be doing it and it's making me meet some of the best people I've ever met in my life. People who who I plan on being friends with forever. For as long as uh, the world will let me. For as long as my life will let me. Till the day I fucking die. That's fun. It's fun meeting somebody who within a week or two of knowing them, you're like, this motherfucker is going to be with me forever. I'm going to make sure this works forever. Because I, cause I, like, I like this that much. I was talking to my friend about this the other night of like... There's a connection between, uh, uh, you know... Maybe it's all love, but there's a there's a connection between like being in love with someone and and just loving a friend and it's the thing that like with both those people 
The thing that makes you know it is that it's effortless to be next to somebody. You don't have you don't you don't worry about saying things. You don't worry about talking. You could you could stand in silence. You could play pool together. You can just be fucking munching on some food. There's never an expectation or a pressure to say shit. You just say shit or you don't say shit. You're comfortable. It's a feeling of like I just like being next to this person. And that's and that's the thing that's made me fall in love and that's the that's the thing that's made me love friends. Is I just want to see you. I just want to be near you. I just want us to be in the same room doing whatever. I'm thankful for those people in my life who I feel that way about and who feel that way about me. I'm very thankful. Um yeah. And I'm thankful uh distraction got a text distraction. <laughs> I'm I'm thankful. I'm thankful for um anybody who's listening to this, anybody who's come to one of my comedy shows. I'm thankful to I don't know. I just feel I feel a lot of uh I feel a lot of love from a lot of people right now and that feels good. <laughs> and I'm very appreciative of it. And I try and say it to them whenever I can. But if there can be a place where I just say it and someone can, you know, maybe someone who I forgot to say it to can hear it, I appreciate the fuck out of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And really, thank you for listening, bro. There are people who have been listening to this thing from fucking episode one, and that's crazy to me. Because we don't have a lot of... I don't have a lot of listeners on this fucking thing. <laughs> but there are motherfuckers who, when when an episode's not coming out, they're upset. <laughs> and that's... I like that. That's nice. That feels good. It feels like I'm not wasting my time on here. It feels like people are... But even if people didn't feel that way, I've always loved doing this and I've always liked being here. And there's a reason why when I don't do it, when I, there's a reason why the fact that I have been missing weeks makes me feel shitty. And it's because I like doing this and I feel like my life, I feel like my life has improved doing this podcast. I feel like I have improved as a, I feel like I've changed as a, as a person. I feel like I've understood myself way more because of this fucking podcast, because I've been talking for an hour. And it's, it's, you know, I don't know. I said this on the podcast before, but my friend, my friend was telling me, he was just saying, oh, you've grown a lot on the, like you've, you've, you can see how much more comfortable you've become, how much you've grown. Uh, and I've done it. I've, I've done what he said of like, he, cause he says he puts on old ones sometimes and then I'll play a new one and you can just see it. And I've done it. And it's fun. It's nice to see. Bro, you should do a podcast. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of motherfuckers out here who are like, everyone's got a podcast. Yeah, but who cares, dude? Don't do it for anyone. Do it for you. Just do it because you like talking. And maybe you feel like you want to... You got some. You might have something interesting to say. That's the thing, bro. I don't like people who stifle other people's fucking voices, dude. I don't. And this sounds maybe stupid because we're talking about podcasts and you don't need a podcast. And But like, I don't know. Every podcast started with somebody being bold as shit. With somebody having a bunch of other motherfuckers be like, you're going to do that? Every great thing started with a bunch of motherfuckers saying, you're going to do that? And you got to go, yeah, I'm doing it. Well, I think that's a bad idea. I don't care, dude. What's the worst that can happen? No one listens to it? That's not that bad. That's not that bad. No one's listening to me. No one's listening to you before you have a podcast. So why not start one? Fuck it. If you have fun doing it, do it. I'm thankful for the people I met this year and I'm thankful for the people who I who I still know who are still in my life who I've met before this year, you know? 
Very thankful. Very thankful for the close friends I've made. I feel like I've made a lot of close friends recently, and it's nice. It's interesting when you meet somebody. It's funny because, like, I feel like I've met so many people in these past four months or five months. This this summer, this summer's been like, this summer has felt like three fucking years in a good way. Where I've met a lot of people and I've done a lot of things to the point where, like, I feel like I've done, maybe maybe it's because I feel like I've done two years worth of shit in, in one summer. Which is a great fucking feeling. It feels like you're really accomplishing something. But also meeting people, meeting people who you feel very connected to very quickly really makes time uh, duplicate. Like there's certain motherfuckers who I've met who, who, who I'm so comfortable with them. It feels like I've known them forever. Uh, and that makes you expand time in your brain where you're like, oh, I must have known this motherfucker forever. <laughs> you know? Like, it, within a month of meeting somebody, I've had a couple people this summer where I met them, and a month into knowing them, I'm like, yo, man, I, like, we're both like, fucking, I really am glad that we know each other, I'm glad we're in each other's lives. And then you think about it, and you're like, man, it's only been a month, I barely know this motherfucker. <laughs> I barely know this motherfucker, what the fuck am I talking about? I like this motherfucker that much, I don't even know them. But you do. But also, it's I think it's a thing because it's a lot of comedians I'm meeting and we see each other every fucking night. So you see somebody every night. You're either going to really get along or really not get along. <laughs> you're going to either really want to keep seeing them every fucking day or you're going to not want to see them at all. And I think that's part of the reason why I've been making a lot of fast friends recently is because it's very, it's very, when you see somebody every night, it's very evident whether or not you want to see them a lot. Oh, and that's the timer for the first half of the podcast. Uh, hell yeah, dude. I'm thankful. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next part. What's up? I'm back. Um, you know what I'm not thankful for? Fucking pieces of shit who suck at pool, dude. Not even they suck. They're just fucking assholes. Dude, every time I play, I've been playing a lot of pool. I told you guys that in the last podcast and it hasn't stopped uh, since the last one. I've been playing fucking nonstop pool almost every night for the past two, three weeks and the fucking month before that. So I've just been playing a lot. And most of the time it's good. Most of the time it's fun. But every once in a while you get just fucking assholes, dude. This motherfucker. This happened in the same night. I was with my friend, uh, Ralph, and we played, dude, this is this fucking guy. There's this guy. We play with this guy and he, I, I don't like when people are annoying with pool. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like I can play very rigid rules, but sometimes motherfuckers are just being like, they're just being assholes. So when I was playing, I was playing pool and we broke, right? And we don't call it on the break. Like whatever gets in on the break, it's still open. Okay. It's still somebody else's turn to get in a ball and whatever ball they get in, that's the ball that they get. Then they're that. They're stripes, they're solids. So we, you know, we're shooting and I shoot one and I, and the ball, the ball I'm trying to get in gets in, but it bounces off another ball. So it's a, it's a dirty shot. That's what they call it. Dirty. If you don't fucking know, if you do know, I'm sorry for explaining it to you. Uh, and the motherfucker I'm playing with is like, yo, that's dirty. We're, we're, we're going to call that. And I, not, not even that. I already was like, I already knew it was dirty. So I was like, I didn't mean to do that, but I guess I'm stripes. And the motherfucker I'm playing with is like, oh, well, if it's dirty, then it doesn't count. Which is true by certain pool rules. But I know this motherfucker. I know this motherfucker. I've, I know this man, you know, we're maybe going to become friends, but things like this prevent it. Because it's like, bro, what are you doing, dude? Why are you doing that? Uh, we're having fun. <laughs> we're having fun, dude. This is a guy, too, who who uh, has previously... Um, we've, like, butt heads. 
And then he, we butt heads because we were playing, the first time I ever played pool with him, he, he kept fucking sh like sh talking in my ear. Kept doing big brother shit, telling me every shot to do. It's like, yeah, motherfucker, I know what shot to do, bro. I, I've played pool. Any shot you say is either going to be what, I, what I'm going to do already, or I'm going to do something else. It's because I'm more comfortable with that kind of a shot. Dude, I have told people, I have suggested shots to people who have done the complete opposite. They do it, do a shot that I would be, they do like a bank shot or some sort of shot that I would be not comfortable doing, and then they get it in. You know why? Because when you play pool, you do what you feel, bro. You do what you fucking feel. And if you feel better about a certain kind of shot, everyone's got their own fucking strengths, dude. When I'm giving a comedian suggestions, right? When I'm when I'm when I'm trying to help a friend of mine who who's got a certain joke, I give him suggestions knowing that he doesn't need to take any of them. They're suggestions. And sometimes you give a motherfucker a suggestion that is is what you would do and it's not what they would do, and so they're right to ignore it. And in pool that happens, dude. If I tell you to do a shot that's like a cut that you're uncomfortable with, I said to do it cuz I'm good with I'm comfortable with cuts I like cutting the ball I think it's fun and I'm, I'm that's my that's one of my strengths playing pool bank shots I'm terrible at so when I tell a motherfucker to do a cut instead of a bank shot and he's fucking comfortable with a bank shot he did the bank shot and he got it in and he was right to fucking ignore me and I said good shot good good for not listening to me meanwhile this motherfucker's big brothering me the first time I met him anyway that put a sour taste in my mouth and then the next time I saw him he's like bro I feel like he got real drunk I was like bro I feel like you don't like me I feel like you don't like me I'm like nah dude you just were fucking an asshole to me and then he was being an asshole to me again with this and since then we've played we played again and we kind of you know we made it not as assholey, uh, but yeah, that that happened right, and that pissed me off. And then me and my friend went to another bar, and then we're at this other bar waiting forever to play pool. And the guys who come on before us, uh, is being just like a like. First of all, he, he's even on the table yet. These two dudes, he's they are not even on the table yet. One of them is 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 pretty fucking cool calm and collected and the other one is drunk as fuck and literally while they're playing this guy's suggesting shots that are bad shots to suggest they're terrible shots to suggest for whatever reason this 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 fucking this bar was filled with people who wanted to suggest shots who all didn't know what the fuck they were talking about they would all suggest terrible things to do so um <laughs> So this motherfucker, these people are playing and literally, uh, he doesn't know the rules they're playing by. He doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, and somebody scratches on the eight ball. Now, sometimes people play where, uh, if you, uh, scratch in any way on the eight ball, you lose, but sometimes you play, uh, if you scratch on the eight ball and it also goes in then you lose, right? If you get the eight ball in and you scratch and you pocket scratch, you lose. Some people play that uh, regular scratches are fine, but if you get uh, the ball in while you're shooting, like if you scratch, if you scratch uh, in the pocket, if you get the ball in the pocket, the white ball in the pocket while you're shooting for the eight, then you lose. People play different rules. This motherfucker doesn't know what rules they're playing by. He just assumes the rules, and somebody scratches on the eight ball, and then he just fucking starts hitting the balls. He just starts hitting the fucking balls away on the table. It's not his table. He's not playing. Every motherfucker in the room is like, I hate this guy, dude. That's the thing, dude, is why do you want to be the guy who everyone in the room instinctively hates? What the fuck are you doing, bro? You're not fun. You're annoying. Anyway, then we had to play this motherfucker because they played the next two people and won and then and then we were on next and I was pissed because I wanted the other motherfuckers to win because I liked them and instead we got to play these fucking assholes and it came down to... And they kept being fucking cunts. Well, not the one. The one guy was fine. But the other guy was a huge cunt. This drunk motherfucker. And it was awful because his friend knew that he was being a piece of shit. Bro, if I wasn't with a dude that fucking drunk, I would say, listen, man, you got to go home or you got to fix how you're acting. I don't care how fucking drunk you are. You, you're, you don't get to be a fucking cunt. You just don't. Okay? I will correct your mood, dude. I've been around motherfuckers who suck when they're drunk and I either don't hang out with that person again or in the moment I go, yo, let's leave. Let's get out of here. Let's stop. Let's stop forcing this onto other people. Let's stop. Let's stop making people have a worse night because of you.
When you're in a bar, you're responsible for not just your night, but other motherfuckers' nights. So don't ruin their night by being a fucking piece of shit. Anyway, they, he keeps being like, if you if you scratch, uh, or if you hit one of our balls, you lose. If you hit one of our, our balls, you lose. Because we fucking smoked them. We got to the eight ball very quick, and they had like eight fucking... Well, not eight, but they had like five uh, of their balls still on the table because we smoked them because they sucked. <laughs> Don't suck and be annoying. It's fucking, oh my God. Anyway, so then they, he starts just like hitting the ball in weird spots. So it's hard for me to not scratch without hitting his ball. And I'm like, bro, we don't even play like that. That's not even how we're playing. We're not even playing like that. If I get the fucking in the pocket, then we lose. I'm not playing like that. And he just keeps being a cunt, keeps laughing. <laughs> um... And, uh, it ends up being like, I have a, like people start, like I put it behind the line and then everyone, cause the day scratched. So then I put the ball behind the line. They're like, he's got no shot. He's got no shot. And then, and then a bunch of people were like, Oh, the eight ball is right in front of the line. So it's on the line, but it's enough in front. Go for that. Go for that. Go for that. Go for that. And I was just going to play it safe and just like hit the white ball into the eight ball and just like lock it into the side so that they couldn't hit it. Like lock it against the wall. But I was getting so fucking annoyed. I was like, fuck it. I'll go for it in the side pocket. And it's a shot where it would probably scratch because I didn't have enough. The the, the ball was hugging the wall. So I didn't have enough fucking room to hit it in the way I should so that the ball would stop and it would, wouldn't go follow the eight ball into the pocket. I said, fuck it. Did it. We lost. This motherfucker came up to me and he goes, he goes, oh, good game, man. You, 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 you're great. You're great. You're, you're good at pool. And I forgot to say this, but the the guy, the last fucking thing, same thing happened. I scratched on the eight ball and then he walked up to me and said, oh, yo, man, you're, you're a good pool player. What do you, why do you, th- what is, what is that, bro? What is that, dude? Because the first time, the first guy, I didn't mean to scratch on the eight ball. It, I just fucked up. This time I was like, fuck it. If we scratch on the eight ball, I'll, I'll be glad to get out of this fucking bar. And then what is it that both... It was crazy because I was like, damn, you guys are the same motherfucker. Annoying as shit. Just way too aggressive and irritating. Not trying to have fun, trying to win. And then you both say the same thing. You know what it is? It's a guilty fucking conscience. Because you were being a cunt. And then and then you won by being a cunt. And then you feel bad. Because I was playing better than you. And being nicer than you. And so that you have to come at me and be like, you know what? You're good. Shut the fuck up. I don't need you to say I'm good. Shut the fuck. What I need is for you to go to a different bar, dude. What I need is for you to either be cool or go home. That's the rules of life, dude. Those those should be strictly enforced laws of, of existing. Be cool or go home. Cops should be able to send you home if you stink. Or, 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 well, not cops. I don't know. Cops are annoying. <laughs> but people, we should have a fucking cool enforcement. We should have a fucking, we should have a legion of cool motherfuckers who patrol bars and they, and they get to dictate whether you get to fucking stay or not. And if you're being a fucking annoying asshole, piece of shit, cunt face, they get to go, hey, man, hey, man, did you just touch those balls without, did you just touch those fucking uh, balls, grab those balls off the table without even finding out how they were playing? Did you just interrupt a game by ripping the eight ball off the table? Hey, man, it's time for you to go the fuck home. I'm, I'm taking the temperature of the vibe in this bar and the feeling that everyone has towards you, and everyone wants to stab you in the throat. So for your own safety, let's get you the fuck out of here. What a raging piece of shit. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, so that was annoying. (laughs) I'm not thankful for those dudes. You know what, though? I'm thankful I'm not one of those people. Hopefully I'm not. Those are the type of motherfuckers that you see and you go, "I, I hope I've never been that guy. Recently, I got pretty drunk around a bunch of people, but I think it, I was a pleasant drunk, so that was nice. Also, I feel like I never get uh, 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 visually drunk. I feel like most of the time I'll have a bunch of beers and people will just be like, hey man, do you ever get drunk? And this was the one night, maybe it's because I was smoking too, but I was a little bit cross-faded 
and I was um I was like I was feeling silly and goofy and I was just like fake fighting people and pickle picking people up. But like in a fun it was like it was fun and loving and I felt like everyone was a good friend of mine. Even strangers who just I was getting along with. I was being very fu- like fun with them. Uh and it was a very good night. And see that is what I is is best case. I thank God that I was like that. Because I could have went the other route. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been that other route, but I, I hope I'm never that route. There's a couple times in college where I got very drunk and I, I was being a bummer. I would get very drunk and sad. And that's not cool. <laughs> Getting drunk and sad is not cool. Recently, I got, I wasn't drunk, but I got sad and that's not fun. That's not fun. Sometimes you can't help it though. Sometimes you just get real fucking sad. That's rough. I hate I hate doing that. I hate getting suddenly sad when I'm with a, a, a group of friends. That's why sometimes when I'm see, feeling real fucking sad, man, I try I try not to I try and stay home and try and stay away from people. But you can't but you can't do that because that just that just doubles down on the sadness. That just that just compresses and deepens the sadness. The dangers of being in your room, man. It's dangerous to be in your room. You don't think about it, but it's fucking bad. You stay home a couple of nights and you feel good playing some video games. You feel good just like being by yourself. But then after a while, those nights add up and you and you start to feel real fucking bad and you don't even really know why. You don't know it's because you need to leave the fucking house and go talk to a human being. Maybe not even talk. You just need to be around the motherfuckers. I realized recently why I go out at night. Because I've been going out constantly every night for a long time. Either to do stand up, or 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 hang out with friends, or go to a bar. I mean, a lot of it's like go to go do stand up, then go to a bar. It's a lot of like socializing, hanging out. I was I was doing it every night for a while, and then what happened was I took I took one night off, <laughs> and I don't know if this is good or bad, but I took one night off recently this week on Monday. And the whole time I was like, I should have went and did. Did, did a mic I should have went out Cause I I started feeling this Very familiar Feeling of loneliness And sadness And I was like Oh That's why I've been going out That's why I've been feeling good Cause I've stayed away from this I've stayed the fuck away From this shit But again I, I was like Is that good or bad Cause it, does that mean I'm running away from something Or does that mean I I understand The medicine You know Is it that I understand What I need To not feel like shit or is it that I can't be alone? Because <laughs> it makes me think about life. But there's nothing wrong with thinking about life. Sometimes you need to do that. And I like thinking about life. I like sitting alone. And during the day, I'm very alone. But there's something I'm going to do at the end of the night. Maybe it's just, I don't know. I feel bad not doing shit. I feel bad not doing something. I can I can do nothing all day as long as at night I go and do something that I feel is productive. Maybe that's what it was. I spent a lot of time not not being productive, and then recently I've been I feel like I've been very productive, and then I took one night off from being what I define as productive, and I and I felt like shit, and I think I I think I just felt like I'm wasting it. I'm wasting the night. It wasn't a feeling of FOMO, which I've had that before. And I don't, I don't like that when I, when I, it felt right that I felt bad in a weird way. I didn't feel bad about feeling bad. I felt good about feeling bad. I felt like, yeah, this is a good thing to feel It's like, I should go do that. Cause I wanted to do that. Now I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I feel like. Oh, I'm right now being at home is not what I want to do. And I should be doing what I want to do. Cause I only got so many fucking years left on this earth. <laughs> I do dude. I think I've said this on the podcast already, but, but yeah, I, uh, <laughs> there's certain things right now that I'm like, I'm getting older and, 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 and think, you know, things about my life. I'm like, ah, I got to fucking, what am I doing? Like dating, bro, with every passing day, I become disturbed by my lack of effort. <laughs> with every fucking day that goes by, I, I'm like, damn, dude, you got to fucking try. 
Because I don't try until unless I really like somebody. And I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I just, I meet people who I think are attractive, who I know something could happen, but I don't want to have 37 fucking bad conversations to, to get to the point where we have okay sex with each other, with a person who I don't like that much, who I will maybe see again, probably not. What is the point of that, dude? I know the moment I start talking to somebody, whether I'm interested or not. And what reasons I'm interested. Because I start talking to somebody sometimes, and I'm like, this is fun. I don't, it gets, this person probably sucks, but I think they're wildly beautiful, and what we're saying to each other is very fun. This girl's trouble. I'll pursue that. I don't know if I should. But if I meet somebody, and I'm like, you're, you're cute, but I don't, this is, every time I say something flirty, you just go, ha yeah. And I'm like, can you add to it? Can you add to it? <laughs> can you yes and my flirt, bro? Yes and me, dude. Everyone should, people should take improv classes just to learn how to fucking flirt. I think that's, I think that's, you know, there should be flirting uh, improv classes. Fuck the comedy aspect. Fuck that shit. There should be flirting 101 where you, where, where you talk to somebody and they're like, hey, this is how you add to uh, if someone's flirting with you, you add to it. You don't you don't just cut it off and then have the person be like, I feel like this person hates me. And then you get to the en- end of the night and the person's like, hey, why didn't you why didn't you ask me home? It's like because you are bad at talking. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. I got to try more. I don't know. I tried recently. I gave somebody my number. <laughs> I don't know if it was a good way to do it. I felt, I feel, I don't know. I told people about it. And some people, most people were like, no, that's nice. But I was like, is it? I don't know. I met somebody. I was at a bar uh, with a friend and then he left and then I was still at the bar. And then this girl came up and she started talking to me. Um, and she's first, she was like, oh, is there a cucumber in your beer? Cause it looked like there was from the label. I was like, no, there's not. Uh, but I thought there was before it's the label and she's like, Oh, and then she kind of continued to stand there and she was getting drinks, but also she was like, she, I, she wanted to talk. I could tell she wanted to talk. Um, and then, uh, I go, you here for a birthday because I heard that she was here for a birthday. She goes, Oh yeah, it's her birthday. I go, Oh, and I turn back and her friend's wearing a fucking tiara and I have a bit about women who wear tiaras on their birthday. And so I bring that up and then she's like, Oh, you're a comedian. And I was like, yeah. And then I told her the bit and she was laughing and then she's like, Oh wow. And then I was asking her about her life and all this shit and it was going well. And then it got to the point where she was like, so what's your deal? Are you just a bar fly? And I was like, yeah, I was born at this bar. And then she's like, Oh yeah, you were born in the corner over there. They got a plaque for you. I go, yeah, I slid out on my mom and then I onto the bar, onto the, onto the bar top. And she goes, oh, yeah, I go, yeah, and then they slid me across. <laughs> and she was laughing at that, and I, that's a good sign. She's laughing at a grotesque joke. Um, and then there was some joke about having a gun or something. I was like, you should always be having a gun on you. And she goes, oh, yeah, I'm packing heat right now. You think I don't carry a gun with me? I'm packing heat right now. Uh, and it was fun and flirty, and then she was like, I should rejoin my friends. She rejoined her friends. And I kept thinking in my head of like, I'm disturbed by my lack of effort, bro. You, uh, fucking make an effort. Make do something, bro. And I went to the bathroom. And when I was at the bathroom, she walked by with her friends because I went to go sit in the back. And my, my arms are crossed. And she walked up to me and she was like, what are you pissed about? I go, what do you mean? I'm just, I just got to pee real bad. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking, I got to piss that bad. That I'm, my arms are crossed. She goes, okay, we get it. You got to pee. Like just, fl- just bullshit flirting. I said, get the fuck out of here, dumbass. And she laughed and walked away. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Oh, and during the conversation when she was talking about comedy, she was asking me comedy venues and she opened the note. And she's like, let me write them down. She was writing down some, some venues. And so I said, fuck it, dude. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a give some effort. And so I waited for her to walk back towards the bar. Uh, and I tapped her on the shoulder. I was like, oh, there's one more comedy venue. I forgot to tell you. And she goes, oh, okay. Uh, and I was like, I'll, I'll punch it in. She's like, all right. And she gave me her phone. And then I typed in my number and I said, Jake, who was born at the bar next to it. And I gave it back. And she goes, what the fuck is this? So many letters. Well, I don't fucking know what this is. How am I supposed to even know what this is? And I was like, just look at it. And then she saw it was my number. 
And this is the face she did. And I'm sorry if you're... I'll describe the face after I do it, but this is the face she did. She, 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 she read out loud, Jake who was born at the bar, and went like this. <laughs> now, if you're, not, if you're not watching, I did a eye roll and then a smile. So it was like the perfect marriage of like, uh, you dumbass, but I kind of like it. <laughs> Which I feel like is my demographic. If somebody is, if I'm talking to somebody and the, and the way they feel about me is like, you fucking loser, but also I, ah, you're, you're cute. Then I, then it might be good. Um, so anyway, I started laughing when she made that face. I was like, anyway, text me. And I walked away, uh, which I could have just, I could have just kept talking to her. Uh, but moments later, I realized, nah, it was a good move to walk away because uh, she proceeded to get so drunk that uh, she went to leave the bar with her beer and the bar back was like, hey, you can't leave the bar with your beer. And she goes, well, I'm just going to. And then she walked up to the door and she couldn't open the door. She was so drunk. And then the bartender just said, no, you're not, and took the beer. And then she figured out the door and left. And I was like, you know what? It's probably for the best. <laughs> you know what? I'm happy for trying, but if she doesn't text me back, it's probably good. <laughs> she might not even have uh, recalled our conversation. I did not realize. <laughs> she definitely was drunk. She definitely was, I don't know. She seemed pretty uh, coherent, uh, but in between me first talking to her and the end of the night, she clearly got very blackout drunk. <laughs> She was a small woman, dude. She was pretty short, dude. Seven, six, six drinks might have killed her. <laughs> so it looks like she had four and uh, she she uh, got, uh, became an asshole to the bar back. <laughs> Which, I don't like that, dude. But yeah, I have not received a text and it's probably for the best. But I'm glad I tried, you know? I'm glad I put some effort forward. I became a little bit less disturbed by actually trying something. Um, yeah. Anyway, there's not much time left in the podcast. Uh, and I just want to say this before I end it. Um, two of my friends who I've met through each other, every time they get on the subway and they see like a stain or something on the, the subway seat, something that's not movable, something that's like on the seat, like, like, a, like a brown or black stain. They always try and wipe it off. And every time they do it, I go, dude, don't fucking do that. Don't do that. And another one of my friends like went to go sit in something like that. I goes, I was like, don't sit there. She goes, why? I go, because if I go, cause it's like, it's like brown spots. And she goes, is it, is it shit? I go, I don't know, man. If you're on the subway, if you're on the subway and you see something that looks like shit, it's probably shit, dude. Bro, I once watched a guy sit down, a homeless man sat down in the middle of a bunch of people and he got up and what was left in his seat was a puddle of shit, a puddle of shit. Don't know why it was a puddle, but it was, it was a brown puddle of shit and everyone sitting next to him looked down and got up and then I watched people come onto the train, notice it and then walk away. I think I've talked about this in the podcast before, right? Shortly after I told my friend, if it looks like shit, it's probably shit. Some other fucking person was straight up shitting in, uh, in the seat on the subway. She got up. Guess what I saw? Puddle of shit. Puddle of shit, bro. People shit on the subway all the time. If you see something brown, say something. <laughs> if you see something that looks like shit on the subway, say something to the people around you. That's what they mean, bro. They talk about danger. If you see something, say something about bags. No, they're talking about shit stains. If you see something, say something. Warn a stranger, bro. Go, hey man, there's a puddle in front of me. Don't sit there. Don't fucking sit there. You know what? Now that I'm remembering it, I was sitting next to the guy who puddled it. And the moment I saw the puddle, I got up and moved and sat down across from it. And then I was, I, when people got on the train, I was like, hey, man, that's not me. <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. But I should have been like, hey, man, that's not, I mean, hey, man, I want you to know there's a puddle of shit there. And I don't want you to sit in it. But also, just so you know, it wasn't me, dude. It was not me. I don't know it's there because I did it. I just know it's there because I witnessed it. <laughs> 
But yeah, man, if you're on the subway and something looks like shit, it is shit. Even if it's not, assume the worst. Because at the end of the day, if you assume it's shit, you won't sit in shit. But if you don't assume it's shit, you just wipe shit with your hand. And that's and that sucks, dude. It's better to not wipe shit with your hand than wipe something that might have been shit with your hand. <laughs> anyway, that's it for the podcast this week. That's the timer. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, tell people you're thankful for them. Uh, tell all, tell all, tell people you love them if you love them. Um, and I hope you're having a great day with your family. And uh, thank you for listening to the podcast. And, or I hope you had a great day with your family because it's coming out on Friday. Uh, get those Black Friday sales. Don't trample anyone to death. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Um, everyone who listens to this podcast, you're the fucking best. Uh, yeah. I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Jake, you're an idiot. Jake, you don't make any sense. Jake, you're a piece of shit. A piece of shit.